In this lesson, we'll cover how to get good tracking from your cutter. Keep in mind that good tracking will often start with loading the media properly. If the loaded media is at a slight angle, this can cause skewing with longer jobs of 5 feet or more. If you need help with loading the media properly, please review the lesson on FC8600 Operation and Workflow and review the section on Loading the Media. There are four useful functions that will enhance the cutter's ability to track well. These options are pre-feed, auto pre-feed, panel cutting, and data sorting. Let's start with pre-feed and auto pre-feed. What these functions essentially do is feed the material prior to cutting the job. This allows the push rollers to establish what is called micro tracks on each side of the vinyl. Once these tracks are established, the push rollers will accurately follow these tracks during the cutting operation. The difference between how these two functions operate is that pre-feed feeds out the material to establish the tracks immediately, whereas auto pre-feed sets the cutter in a mode that prior to cutting a job will automatically pre-feed the material to a predetermined length. To use pre-feed, press the menu key. This will get us into the main menu where we can select the 4 key for media. Then press the 1 key for pre-feed. Next we set the distance we want the media to be fed by pressing the up or down arrow keys. And then we simply press enter. The cutter will start feeding out the media to the specified length. As it does this, the push rollers will make an impression on the vinyl as a track that it can follow when the job is sent. To enable the auto pre-feed, press the menu key. In the main menu, press the 4 key for media. Next, press the 2 key for auto pre-feed. When in the auto pre-feed menu, press the 1 key, and this little pop-up menu appears, so that we can then press the 1 key again to enable the auto pre-feed. And then press the 2 key to establish the pre-feed length. Now we just press the up or down arrow keys to establish the length, and then press the left arrow key. Press enter to accept the changes. Finally, press the menu key to return to the default main screen. Now, each time a job is sent to the cutter, it will automatically pre-feed the material to the specified length prior to cutting that section. Turning on the auto pre-feed is a good idea when you're consistently cutting longer jobs. At the same time though, it can be a time waster if you're cutting smaller jobs that are using a material that doesn't necessarily need to be pre-fed. As a general rule, if you find that you're doing mostly smaller jobs, and maybe an occasional longer job, use the pre-feed function. On the other hand, if you find that you're consistently doing longer jobs, or you have a material that seems to slip a lot, then by all means enable the auto pre-feed function. It may take a little extra time to feed the material, but it will keep the media and the job on track. When working with thicker materials, or materials that tend to slip, reducing the speed of the media during the pre-feeding operation may be necessary. For instance, if you find that the tracking is not firmly established to your liking, this is when the pre-feed speed should be reduced. To change the speed, press the menu button. From the main menu, press the 4 key for media. Press the down arrow key to switch to the second page of options. Press the 1 key to select Feed Speed. Press the 1 key to set the feed speed to a slower pace. This will allow the push roller to make a better impression on the media for tracking. Press Enter to have the cutter accept the change. Press the menu key to return to the ready mode. Another function to use to obtain good tracking is panel cutting. Picture this scenario. You are cutting a stiffer media that tends to slip, causing the media to skew as it moves back and forth. Some reflective materials can be like this. Panel cutting is ideal for situations like these. It can panel a job in sections. 
In other words, it will cut the job one section at a time. This reduces the amount of movement during the cutting operation and thus keeps the media on track. To enable panel cutting, press the menu key. Press the 4 key for media. Press the up arrow key and then press the 1 key for panel cutting. To enable panel cutting, press the 1 key. In this little pop-up menu, panel cutting is enabled by pressing the 1 key. And this will automatically return to the panel cutting menu. Next, you want to set the divide length. The divide length is the distance each panel is to be cut prior to moving on to the next panel. To change the value, press the 2 key and in the pop-up menu, press the up or down arrow key to set the length of the panels. As a note, if you press the fast key, this will change the increments to a higher value. When setting this value, keep in mind that as a general rule, materials that have a greater tendency to skew should have shorter divide lengths. In some cases, you may even want to have the length set to as low as 1 foot or 12 inches. Once that value is set, then we can press the left arrow button to get to the previous menu. And then press enter to accept the changes. Now as we plot, you'll notice that the job is now paneled. To give a better visual, we've flipped the media over and are plotting on the paper liner. Also, for even better tracking, enable both the auto pre-feed and the panel cutting. The last feature that will assist in the cutter's tracking is data sorting. It's another avenue to use to obtain good tracking. What sorting does is it prevents excess movement during the cutting operation. What can happen, especially with longer jobs, is different elements of the design are not cut in order. This produces a situation where the cutting tool is going all over the place, cutting objects at the beginning of the media, and then traveling all the way down to the end of the media to cut another element. This produces extra, often unnecessary, movements. Sorting prevents this from happening. Sorting organizes each element so that it cuts in the order that they are laid out in the design, rather than cutting them randomly. This makes the cutting of your designs more efficient by removing the excess movement. To enable the sorting function, First press the menu key. Press the 1 key for tools. Press the down arrow key to switch to the second page of options. And press the 2 key for data sorting. There are two types of sorting to choose from, area and tool. When area sorting is enabled, the job elements and shapes are sorted to optimize the movement of the media as it moves back and forth. It will move to the various cutting positions with the tool raised, and it is most effective with the cutting elements in general. This is the choice most often used. The tool sorting is used when different tools in a job are used. For instance, if you plan to plot using a pen, and within the same job use the cutting tool, this option will sort the job so that there is minimal tool exchange. As mentioned, in most cases, it's the area sorting that will be enabled. All we have to do now is press the 1 key for area sorting, press the 1 key again for on, and then press enter to accept the changes. When data sorting is turned on, the cutter will not immediately start cutting when the design or job is sent from the software. Don't be alarmed by this. What the cutter is doing is taking in all the data of the design and then organizing it before it starts to cut the design. Keep in mind that data sorting may be a function that is part of the software application that you are using, so it will be up to you to choose whether you want the software to do the organizing or for the cutter to do it.